Good morning. So I want to share something that just happened. I was, um, you see these stones, I crawl down on these stones a lot of times and you can see how they're sitting on one another, um, kind of toppled. And I was just climbing down to find a place in the shade where I could sit and I was going to record a video which is, which is talking about, um, uh, living a precise life, like um, uh, cleaning up your life and how to live an intentional, very intentional life. And as I was crawling down, one of the stones I stepped on, it was a fairly big stone, started rolling and I fell. And that could have caused a whole, you know, it could have been so much worse. And I fell and I actually got hurt pretty bad at my back and like my bum. And I was thinking, first of all, it's, it's how precious life is, how precious life is, how quickly things can change just like that. You know, as I was crawling down there, I was looking at those stones because I kind of came to a place that I, I don't come that often. I was looking at the big stones and I was thinking, wow, some of those stones are held up by a little tiny stone that's underneath them. And I could see how they're all kind of precarious. Um, I'll turn it around here in a minute and show you. And then I stepped on that stone and it started rolling and I rolled and I was like, Ugh. because if something had been, if that stone had been holding a bigger stone, it could have started a whole stone avalanche. And it really got me thinking, it's really connecting to this video that I was coming down here to film in the beginning from the get go, the, that it, living a precise life, life is so delicate. You know, I see it. Um, as I go along in this spiritual awakening, as I rise, I see like the animals. I see, you know, I'm out in nature a lot and you see, uh, you know, little bugs or little beetles that had died or, or there was this big old chameleon in the tree that died in the tree. And, you know, it had lived probably, it had to have been very old. You know, lizards live, I don't know how long, I'm not even gonna put a date, a date on it, but it was the biggest chameleon I've ever seen. And, you know, how precious life is and the only thing that really is uh, certain in life is that this lifetime will end for each and every one of us we see it on our own selves as we age as we grow up um you know it's something we don't like it, 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 you know we a lot of times we feel like this is forever or you know we 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 live a sloppy life or you know without intention um, kind of feeling like uh, I have time, I have time. And really what I want to talk about is living an intentional life, bringing, uh, cleaning up your life so that it is uh, what you intend it to be. And it's, it's an indirect, it kind of happens indirectly. So it's not like, okay, well, you know, we can force our ways through, uh, through life and say, okay, oh, my back. I really hit my ribs hard. Ugh. I want to get out of the sun. I was actually crawling down to find a place in the shade. And then after I fell, I decided I'm not going down there anymore, especially after the rains yesterday. Everything's shifting. But my back is really hurting. Um, I guess I, I'm lucky in the way that that, wow, I can just, <laughs> it really hurts. Um. So living a precise life, you know, cleaning up your life and the way that you do it, and it, it, it's really an indirect way is that, is that if you want to, what you really are reaching for is the emotion, the emotion that you want to, to live in. You want to live a fulfilled life. You want to feel good. You want loving relationships. So it's really reaching for the emotion of those things. And by but the way that the way that I'm finding in my life to purify myself and clean up my own life and enhance my life is by purifying my thoughts and purifying my words, really just paying attention to myself. And in that way, you know, all the thoughts that are negative towards me or towards the world, you just purify them out, just take them completely out. You know, as I as I watch my words, my uh, life shifts into a more positive place. So if I am focusing on all the good things, you know, and, and then, then my life is going to have a taste of good. These are this little dummy. I 
the apples from the tree here, from this tree. Um, and, and by purifying my thoughts and my emotions and bringing my focus into my own hands, you know, it's like a, really what you have to do is pay attention to your thoughts, pay attention to what you're allowing in your life to the, you know, if you're allowing negativity into your life, then you are going to have an emotional vibration of negativity. If you are, you know, if, when, if you have thoughts that feel good, it feels way different than having thoughts that don't feel good. And so, <clears throat> it's really watching your words and watching your thoughts and watching what you allow into your life uh, by paying attention and cleaning up your, your words. And by cleaning up your words, your life will shift into a more intentional place. Um, and you can alchemize your thoughts. So a lot of times we'll, we have thoughts that will come up automatically because we're on automatic mode or thoughts that we have continuously thought throughout our lives. And in order to change them, you know, we can, we can look at a situation, we can look at it in so many different ways. Um, we can, we can look in a situation and see it in a, in a negative aspect, or we can look in a situation that is uh, on the surface negative and take it into a place of, okay, so this is, the, what is the lesson in this? How can I alchemize my thoughts into a more positive way of being? You know, if there's a way of thinking, if, if something happened that is the negative, instead of focusing on that negative, focus on, okay, well, that happened. That means that that is not the right route. That means that whatever happened there is not in sync with my being and then start looking for the opposite of it. So, any kind of uh, negative thought is the want for its opposite. So you can always go in and alchemize your thoughts and bring your focus into the positive. And as you bring your focus into the positive, you are living a more intentional life. You are able to you know, pay attention to your thoughts and bring your thoughts to where you want them to be. And then the outcome in your life will be a, um, uh, will be like in sync with that will be an automatic outcome it will you know if you're thinking positive thoughts you're going to have positive words to say you're going to have a uh, positive experience um, so it's really just like purifying your mind and purifying your thoughts um, I'm in a lot of pain now so I'm going to end this here and thank you for watching <laughs> there's a lesson okay so I got home after my morning walk and I want to connect back to the video that I was doing. I was in, I was in pain and I see how physical pain, it releases emotional pain. When you're going through something the physical, all of a sudden, if, 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 if like you, you have a physical pain, it brings to the surface all of your emotional pain because your threshold of what you can, um, what you can contain becomes smaller. I took a shower and I make this uh, natural cream. It's not really cream. It's more like an oil and it has all sorts of, uh, of essential oils in it and uh, different plants and stuff that I put in it. And it's based on, ooh, uh, based on coconut, on coconut oil. I forgot I was cooking. Crap, it's a little bit. Oh, well. Um, and I was talking about in the video and the point that I really wanted to make was about uh, alchemizing your thoughts and this emotion, this, I'm going to stop this for a minute because I have to take care of the food. So or actually, you know, you can just be with me as I do it. It's kind of burning. So I'm going to remove it from the gas. olive oil. I get my olive oil from um, my daughter's parents, uh, my daughter's boyfriend's parents. They have olive, an olive grove and they make their own olive oil. It's kind of burning. I was, wasn't watching it. These are eggs that I collect from my parents. So a little bit <laughs> while we go about my, how I, um, I, th these are the only chicken eggs that I eat where I know where they came from. I also feed, help feed the chickens, so 
that is all sorts of scraps that I collect from the food. Typically, I check the eggs before I uh, use them I, because they, they're, they come from the yard. Uh, but those eggs in particular, I know that they are fresh because of where I got them from. I know that they had only been there like a, they had, it could have only been there a day or less than a day. But it's amazing how, how physical pain jars open your emotional pain this morning. Um, after like a few minutes ago, after I got home, I kind of had a little bit of a breakdown and because of the whole twin flame journey, I guess a lot of it is coming to the surface. And places that I didn't even realize I was holding things that, and I thought that it would be a good opportunity to show how uh, to alchemize your thoughts. Because, because I'm going through it right now. I'm looking for the pepper. I don't know where to put it. My son probably used it. I'm going to pause this for a minute. I have to recollect myself. So right now I'm kind of in this uh, place of these low, dense kinds of thoughts. You know, poor me, kind of, oh no, <laughs> we're all doomed kind of thoughts, you know, with the whole twin flame journey and the pain of it. And kind of going back into the old mindset and down the spiral. And see, we're, this is all a process. We all have our high moments and we have our low moments and we're all, this is part of being human and part of going through this process, um, this uh, enlightening process, the process of going, um, you know, the rising of the, uh, of, of the spiritual awakening is going through this. You have to go through the weak parts in order to get to the heights. You have to know all the different spectrum you have to feel the the low vibrations and the high vibrations to be able to come into complete control of your being and i'm just thinking about you know the in the 3d you know going back into the 3d say i i i just feel like this Like I'm mourning a loss. It's like finding somebody that you have like been waiting for your entire life. And And realizing that it could never be. And there, if there's a mourning process in that, and I guess for any kind of loss of, you know, marriage, spouse, um, could feel in, in this way, like you're losing your best friend, you're losing... But I realized that maybe I need to sit in this just a little bit longer before I start alchemizing it and bringing myself out because right now I just feel Like I need to um, dive deeper into it and let all the pain come out before I start shifting it. Oh, see, I have these two sides to me. I also have the other side that says there is no purpose in sitting in that. There is no purpose in sitting in the gunk. 
you know, you, the, I've already done the work. I already know the rounds, you know, just pull yourself out. There's no purpose in sitting in that low vibration if I can start pulling myself out of it. And the way you pull out of it is by alchemizing your thoughts. You start taking those thoughts and you start bringing them lighter and lighter and lighter and shifting them into power. For instance, like with, with the whole twin flame thing, it, you know, it has come to serve a purpose. It has come to, to awaken me. It has come to, you know, when you are going through your deepest, deepest losses or the deepest depths of your soul and having to accept things, you know, it's, it's the ultimate letting go. It's, it's the ultimate finding true love, you know, finding true love is allowing that other person, you know, being, being, allowing that other person to blossom and to do his own thing. You see, the pain is coming in from really from the ego, really from the place of uh, trying to hold on to somebody, trying to like almost uh, force them into what my expectation is or what, what I want. need to go shopping here in a day today maybe a little bit later <clears throat> um so when when a, and true love is not trying to force somebody into my expectation of what i think that they and the truth is when you love somebody you love them for who they are you want to see them blossom you want to you know trying to hold on to somebody is trying to bring them down into your own narrow vision so in that way i feel First of all, I feel blessed uh, that he came into my life because he's such an interesting and outgoing and intriguing, and he's added so much value into my life um, and so much value about myself, too. A lot of self, uh, you know, finding myself. And he can do, you know, this whole thing came up because the other day we, we spent the evening together. We actually spent like three evenings together. And something in me knows that uh the that he had you know he went out on a, a date after we met and something in me just is a knowing there's just like uh you know like that telepathic communication thing and i've just i've just kind of not given it any power just kind of like okay that's you know that's completely his right you know, if I meet somebody that I like and that I find intriguing, I also want to uh, allow myself the opportunity to explore. And he has never told me any different. It's not like I have any kind of right over him. And I got to, I got to, I really enjoyed our company that, that we spent the evening together. So I feel like blessed in that way that, uh, that I did, was given that opportunity and given that and so, like, really, when, when I think about it, I can't, I can't, uh, um, this is, like, really hot, but I like it. I like every once in a while some, something really hot. It, like, it, like, moves you. It shocks your system. I don't really eat daily basis hot, but I feel like it now. And I made this tea this morning. I went and got some root. I'll show you. Ashwagandha, I think, Ashwagandha, I don't remember what it's called, but you can find it online. It's like this uh, root, um, and this is uh, these flowers from this, um, it, it, it's, it was already dried. I picked it up off the floor from under the, uh, uh, off the ground from under the tree. It's the, the flower petals of this uh, Chinese tree, and it's uh, used for focus and for calming it has cal calming attributes the ashwagandha is also like a superfood and, and really goes for focus and calming and so using nature's uh nature remedies so really oh, i'm gonna take the focus back and, and start focusing it back on myself bring it back in quit feeling sorry for myself um alchemize all of this uh all of the 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 um low vibrational thoughts, all the poor me, and take a vitamin, and I'm working on my site today, so that's where I am. So we're all in this together. This is all, this is a process. The, the rising into your higher self is a process, and 
we always have these 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 um, you know opportunities to rise further uh, further up. Um, but I just found that to be a very a unique uh, like uh, observation that the physical pain brings out the emotional pain. You know, if there's something under the surface, surface, and then you have some physical pain, it brings it up because your your threshold becomes that much smaller. You don't have the patience to hold on to that. So I'm actually pretty happy that that came out this morning because it's kind of like. See, I already feel better because I'm already being able to, to you know, the, the, the thought process, change the thought process and bring it back to myself and see how much I have gained from this, uh, from the union with, with my twin and I and how much I've already, you know, and kind of can let it go as it, uh, as it happens and really realize that, that, that he's always there, the telepathy. I, the, that's the telepathy. Sometimes, sometimes it's like, I really need to get over the trying to hold on and then there won't be pain in the telepathy. It'll be more like, oh, that's what you're up to. Um, so I'm still rising, still rising, and I'm trusting that this, I can see more and more how this journey is divinely guided. I can see more and more how, how you know, my threshold today, like now I'm already grinning about it. A, a minute ago, I was crying in the shower. So, and now, you know, it's kind of like there's this certain amount of pain. You can, you start learning how to release the pain. You release it, alchemize your thoughts, bring yourself back to yourself. I'm working on this site. I'm really excited about it and have a package to get ready and really just bringing myself back to myself without anticipation, without understanding that, that you see, ever since we we ever since that big blow up a few weeks ago, we've seen each other consistently, uh, without making a phone call, without trying to set it up. We've seen each other this week. I saw him like three times. It's like, it's it's like the the what is meant to be comes together anyway. And I'm starting to learn how to trust that. And I can also see the divine timing in it. Like there'll be a time that I miss him and I really want to see him and then I won't see him. And then afterwards I'll see that that was precise. That was exact. That was, that was exactly as it was meant to be. So um, I'm starting to learn how to really just let go and trust, not try to hold on. When the pain comes up, allow it to come up, go through it, alchemize my thoughts, bring myself back into my own uh, being, you know, not let my own thoughts take me down and bury me back and into chasing mode and into, you know, it's, it's, it's happening quicker and quicker. The shift is happening quicker and quicker. I'm able to bring myself back to myself faster and faster. So I'm learning this process. I'm learning this process. I'm growing with this process. So thank you for watching. I'm going to eat. Ah!